What's up everybody? I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm going to give you an in-depth breakdown of the brand new Ragdoll song called Rust. It's available on all your favorite digital platforms in case you haven't checked it out already. For the song I use my PRS SC245 and the Axe FX3. My approach to this kind of sound when I'm recording is to either double or quad track the guitars. I normally go for something like a rectifier model together with like a high gain Marshall, either a Friedman, the Atomica, a Bogner, uh, have no recollection of what we actually used on here for the marshall -y style amp. But nevertheless, if you've got a, like a twin humbucker guitar uh, in drop C and you've got any type of high gain amp that you can boost with something like a Tube Screamer or a Super Overdrive into a cab with V30s, you should be able to get pretty close to this kind of guitar sound. I'm gonna break down all the individual parts in this video. There is tab linked in the video description. And if you wanna watch my full playthrough with no talking, you can check that out on my channel. I've linked that below as well. Uh, but let's get into the guts of this. If there's anything you didn't understand in here or any questions you wanna ask or suggestions for future songs you would like me to see break down like this please let me know in the comments until then stay excellent enjoy the tune and if you're feeling really generous put up a video of you playing through the song and send it to me let's go here's the main riff of the song played slowly So the song starts off with that single note variation of the riff with a really lo-fi kind of guitar sound. This is what we're doing with down around the third and fifth fret on the low two strings in drop C. These are tuned to C for the lowest string and G for the fifth string. Essentially, we're just hammering on from three to five on the fifth string and we're alternating between that and some notes on the low string and then the third fret on the low string and the fifth fret on the low string again. Now, because I've got a position shift coming up, you'll notice that I play that fifth fret on the low string with my first finger. That's just gonna set me up to move up to fret 10 and 12, which we do on the fifth string. And then on the sixth string. Then there's an open low string and the first time around you hit the seventh fret. That little section a few times. Let's put it all together nice and slowly. And the second time we play that riff, instead of playing the seventh fret, which would be an interval of a fifth from the low string, we play the flat five, which is the sixth fret. And we also anticipate the beat when we go back to that low string. Now in the intro of the song, it's played with single notes with that lo-fi sound. Then when you hit this sixth fret, we're actually gonna play it as a one finger power chord and that's where the main rhythm sound kicks in. So you actually get this. And you're also gonna hit the low three strings to get that big, really angry sounding uh, three string power chord there. Then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna repeat that riff, but we're gonna replace single notes with power chords. So for the three five hammer on on the A string, I'm playing uh, now the third fret on the A string, even though it's tuned to G, and then the fifth fret on the fourth string there. And again, it's that really angry sounding power chord, the low three strings open. And I tend to play these power chords with my pointer finger and my pinky for no real reason. That's just how I've always done it. Then it's one finger power chords on the bottom for three. Hopefully that makes sense, we get this. And then it's back to single notes for the second part of the riff. Except for this last one, which is gonna be a one finger power chord on seven. 
And you would repeat that, but again, replace seven with six. So for the main riff, we get this. all played with downstrokes. Moving on to the verse, the verse is essentially a variation on that riff. Instead of playing three to five though for the notes, in this case that's actually a B flat note and that's a C note, we're gonna play 10, 12 on the low string like this. One more time, a little bit slower. And at speed. Then we would play the single note variation of the riff, ending on fret 7. And again, this is one of these tricky little arranging things. Every other time in the song when we played 7, we kind of slid off it and came back on beat 1 of the next bar with an open string. And this time, we're anticipating it. So... And that is just a big, chunky D, actually it's C, I keep forgetting I'm down in drop C. It's a C5, basically, so all I'm adding, uh, it's the low three strings open, then second on the third string, and third on the second string. Let's move on to the chorus now. There's only three notes in the chorus. It's the open C string. Then it's the first fret of the fifth string. And then it's the fifth fret of the low string. And the rhythm changes up a little bit. I'll play it for you. And there's that little tail end riff again. So the first rhythm is this. Then on the second note, you play this. And on the last note, you play this. And you kind of bend it very slightly at the end just to get that kind of bluesy feel. And the first time you play it, you slide off like that. And for the second chorus, you keep going, you go. And if you can get a pinched harmonic there, do it. Then we go to the breakdown. This is a variation on the verse riff, it goes like this. So you can hear there and you can see that I'm doing deliberately doing some upstrokes in there to get that kind of what I call the squanch out of it. Uh, and some muted notes there, which kind of give you that genty thing in there. So uh, that's definitely what we were going for with this breakdown. Then the other notes, we're hammering on from the open string to the first fret of the low string, and then we're hitting the third fret of the fifth string. So. And 
and it's totally up to you if you want to use your pinky or your ring finger for that section. That also doubles up as the ending of the song as well. We then move on to the bridge and you'll notice that the tonality has shifted away from like a natural minor kind of thing uh, that we were playing before or even like a pentatonic blue scale thing to a Phrygian dominant uh, kind of feel these notes. giving it that kind of exotic feel, or for me, I always think of Ingve Malmsteen. But we're moving on to the fourth string now, which is also tuned to C, and we're hammering on open 10, 12 for the first part. With that kind of triplet feel. Then we play off 13 and 12. So it's open 13, open 12, 13, 12. And you do the same sequence, but on fret 10 and 7. And the second time you play it, you start with the same bit. We've got this very Malmsteen-inspired run, uh, starting on the 10th fret, hammering on 10, 11, pulling off 10, 8 and hitting 11 on the B string, and that is all crammed together, so you get like a pattern of five against two. Then we're playing 10, 8, 7. And repeating that down the octave, so you put your middle finger on fret seven this time. All up. It's actually up to you if you want to hit 7 for that note there on the B string or if you want to hit fret 11 on the G. So you can go... That run is going to be repeated a few more times. The second time, you play almost identically the same part, but instead of going to 10 and 7, you go all the way up to 17 and 16. So... And it's the same run again. Then we're going to move on to the solo. So the solo starts on the 12th fret and we're going to play that for a whole bar. Not quite a whole bar actually. You then do this run where you hammer on and pull off from 12 to 13 and slide down to 7. So it's... Then you're up to 10, down to 5, back up to 7. So you get this... Then you slide all the way up to 16 and back down to 12. That together is... And we're still keeping that Phrygian dominant vibe. What you're going to do is go to fret 11 on the third string and bend it by a semitone, release it, and then hit the 12th fret. So... Then there's a hammer on from 11 to 12 and you hit 13 on the second string. We get this. Then this is a super weird lick. It just sounds cool. Uh, it has a few outside notes in there, but that's always part of the fun. We're on fret seven and eight on the third string. And then fret seven and 10 on the second string. But then you're gonna hit nine, 10 on the second string. Then we're going to hammer on and pull off 7 and 8. Then we're going to hit 8 on the G. And then it's 7 on the second string. What is this? 8 on the third string and 10 on the fourth string. All up.
That one is a real doozy. And then this one, which uh, has a few outside notes. Again, essentially, there's a little bit of the Lydian dominant mode creeping in right at the end of this lick. You go up to 11 and 12 on the third string and then hit, what is it, uh, 10 and 13 on the next string. So you get this. Then you're going to swap fingers and play that note there on the 13th of the second string again, and then reach up to 15 and 14 on the first string. Then on 14, you're going to bend and release by a semitone. Then it's 15, 13 on the second string. And then it's 14, 13 on the third string. This is the flat five, which kind of uh, says, hey, there's a little bit of Lydian dominant going on. Basically, they're stanky notes and they build a lot of tension. Think about it that way if you're not too down with the theory. So this is the, this is the exotic part of the solo. Then we are going to be on fret 17. This is a diminished seventh idea. We're going to hit 17, slide up to 20, slide back to 17, pull off to 14. Then we're going to hit 16 on the second string. And it's 17, 14 on the third string to finish. Then, we're almost at the end, we are going to do a very similar kind of idea. We're going to start on 14 with our pinky. We're going to slide up to 17, back to 14, but instead of making it a diminished seventh idea, we're going for like a dominant seventh idea here. So we're going to come all the way down to 10. This is way harder to play slow than it is fast because I just kind of do a random twitch. Then we're going to play 13, 10, 8 on the B string. And there's our old friend, the run from the bridge. And you finish with that breakdown bit. So it brings together a lot of different themes at the end. Let me see if I can play this solo nice and slowly for you guys. When we tracked the solo, I actually went back and I added a few little thirds harmonies and octaves and fifths and things like that. And for the life of me, I cannot remember what I did because we basically just went through line by line and would add a little guitar overdub and we mix it down quite low just to make the solo sound a bit more exciting. But if you play this, uh, that's the main part of the guitar solo. There's then the chorus again, the main riff and the breakdown. So I'll just play through basically each of those parts again to remind you and then we've got the song.
that pretty much completes all the various parts for the song. There is a lot of guitar layering and a lot of overdubs in here. So if you want to play along to this, uh, don't be too disheartened if you can't make the guitars sound as big as you like, because part of the production technique there was using, uh, you know, a lot of different guitar layers uh, with a little bit less gain than I would normally go for if I was playing live and then stacking all of those to get a big thick guitar sound. Yeah. 